everybody, this is Frogman. Welcome back to Compact Claustrophobia. There's been a few things happen in between episodes. Um, with the advent of us getting that, what is it, the 9 by 9 cubes? It's been a minute cause, since I've recorded because I haven't. I did a whole bunch of work and then I didn't record any of it, so I've got to remember it. So, But yes, there's been quite a few things that have happened since we've gotten those. Uh, well, the one thing is, is the workshop's no longer in this little room with all of our ore processing storage and the ore processing, or I should say ore processing, materials gathering system and storage is now all in this one cube. So you can kind of guess what we're going to do here. We've got a bunch of cubes we get to go look at and then a few things we might try today because there are a few things that I want I guess the first thing I want to look at as well is that I have completed all of the random little light duty quests that were in the first chapter except for these two right here so I think we needed to do the calculator which calculator is just make a calculator which I think the big problem about the calculator was the math calculator because I needed to get an ink sack or black pigment and a black pigment, if I click on it, is pulverized charcoal and water. So we already have the charcoal capability. We can do that. I think the other one was, let's see if I can get out of here. This one, uh, this one was cyan dye, I believe. This was what we needed with cyan dye at that point. And again, cyan dye was nothing more than just a little bit of, come on. Cyan dye is nothing more than a little bit of, uh, what is it, lapis and, where are we, lapis and a green pigment, which we already had all this stuff too. So lapis and cactus green, we had all that stuff. That was pretty simple. Um, let me see. I think there was something over here. There was the, if it's dumb, upgrade just to make this augment. That was pretty simple, easy, and I need to quit clicking out of my quest book. I made the morphing tool finally because we have a thing. So the morphing tool is pretty cool. Morphing tool is very handy. It's one of those, I kind of like these kinds of things when you get them in, ma in mod packs. And the morphing tool, I believe the problem with that one was Rose Red. And I will show you how I dealt with Rose Red. That was actually really very simple. So, um, but yeah, the morphing tool is a tool that you basically craft your other tools with. Like I took all of the tools that I currently have, all of the, what is it, the wrenches. I don't even think I have another wrench to show. Um, I don't think you can do it with that because that has durability. But like the, well, you might be able to, but like say the, the, the hammer from immersive engineering, the crescent hammer from thermal, you just craft it with the tool. And then when you want to use that specific tool, you hold shift and scroll wheel through the tools that you have. So it's pretty nice, pretty handy. It means I'm saving a little bit of space. Uh, I also crafted a Tome of Knowledge, which is going to be in another deal, which is going to be in another, uh, this is going to be over in the next lane of levels, which we're going to be looking at in here, because it's literally one of those things where I've been kind of hanging on to experience. I've actually died a couple of times so far and lost all the experience, and I know we're going to need the experience, so I crafted the experience. Well, that also means that I know how to make Ender Pearls now. Ender Pearls, we're going to be making a few of those today, so I'll show you how we make them. The process is pretty simple, but it's kind of expensive when it comes to various stuff. So let's get back out of this and go back over here. I think that was this one pretty much completed. I know there's a couple up here that we had, didn't have to worry about, so I'm not worried about them right now. I did complete the bricks from the other regions, and there must be a better way here where this was requiring of the 3 by 3 or 27 blast bricks, which I immediately converted into the uh, hard, better blast bricks, the ones that are the you know the make, to make the... Uh, what is it? Blast furnace, blast, 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 furnace, furnace. The good blast furnace should say the improved blast furnace. There we go. That one, which can be run with the blast furnace preheater. So if we need to, we can definitely get onto that. And I completed the aluminum ore thing by sitting here and sieving, I forget, probably about seven or eight stacks of the, what is it? Sand into, I think it's sand into this gives me the aluminum pieces with an iron stiff and mesh. So I basically made a bunch of sieves and made a bunch of iron stiff and meshes and just sat there and pounded out the stuff until we got the aluminum. Now, aluminum is one of those, do you really, really need it? Yes, we kind of do. So we're going to go ahead and craft it into the next level of stuffs and get some of this going. Once you get the aluminum, once you get the three pieces of aluminum, you put the aluminum, pi you make aluminum pickaxes and you put the aluminum pickaxes in one of these and they give you back these little aluminum more pieces which is awesome so i actually need to put you back so i know where they're at and let's go excuse me look at what we've been doing in the main new workshop now that we have the big ones so you can already see there's a little bit of a change here of course our new crafting area is going to be right here and we have the ability now to have floors we actually have enough vertical space to do floors so let's go upstairs very quickly and up here all i've done is just put some of the immersive engineering machines 
So we have our squeezer, we've got our plate press, and we've got our crusher, and the crusher is going to get one of those. And I know I should not have done that, so let's do, I think it's this one. Thank you, cool. Let's go back over here and turn that up just a little bit. There we go, just so I know he's running. Because I, you can. that's about the only way you can ore double the aluminum, is by running it through either the crusher or running it through the arc furnace. As far as the rest of the workshop, the workshop has now grown up. We've got an ability to be able to have a little bit of space and a little bit of room and ability to be able to do things a little bit easier. So I just kind of laid things out on the walls for the point that we need at this, you know, just, just kind of laying things out so we have the room for them. So we have our induction smelter over here, our igneous extruder that is providing a cobblestone to that magma crucible, which is providing, this is a, this is a very cheap, very quick way of making the obsidian without having to deal with an igneous extruder and the water functionality, which I can do, but it's one of those, we're just going to do it this way for now. But the magma crucible just pumps lava into that stone barrel. There is a bit of water on top of that stone barrel. And as we know with Ex Nihilo, that immediately turns the lava into obsidian. And we've been making a little bit of obsidian. I've actually been using a little bit of obsidian. So that's how that's working over there. Um, over here we have our uh, nuclear craft machine. So I have the melter, the ingot former, because we're going to need these for a little while longer. Until we get to the next size one of these, we're going to need these for just a little while longer. We have our alloy furnace, which I believe we made last episode, the manufacturer we made last episode, and they have a couple of upgrades in them now. And I was automating it to do a few things into making a pressurizer happen here. Now, pressurizer is something we did not make in last episode because there are a few things I went ahead and skipped ahead on believe pressurizer on a pressurizer we can look at pressurizer they're again just a bunch of little bitty parts so the random stuff that we made nuclear ferroborne alloy kind of come things all these kind of wonderful stuff what a pressurizer does the biggest thing that we're going to be using a pressurizer for is it takes graphite dust and it turns it into coal and I think other than that, it will make plates and whatnot out of our ingots too, which is kind of cool. I may be using it for that kind of stuff. But the biggest use I'm going to be using it for is that right there because of the fact that that's how we get coal right now. That's how we're going to get coal. That's why I have coal over here doing being worked through the furnace. And, woo, hello. The furnace has a augmentation of the pyro, pyrolytic conversion which is part of, again, this little line over here where we once we got through the hop, hop graphite dust and the, uh, the diamonds and all those wonderful things, we could do this as well. And the reason why I did that is because it's faster or will be faster eventually to be able to automate the making of coal coke using a redstone furnace once we can get to the next level of tier of, of accelerator it's a lot faster plus they take a lot less space and they require very little rf power especially at that level so this one takes quite a bit of power that's why it's 23 and 23 and it's also very slow so the process is do we have any wood on us at all probably not i've used it all i've done all the things so any, what was that? That was the graphite dust. Graphite dust, graphite dust. Graphite dust should do the job, I believe. So the process is basically we make charcoal, we run the charcoal through a pulverizer or a manufacturer to make the charcoal dust. Charcoal dust is then run through the manufacturer, or the, yeah, through manufacturer again to get graphite dust. And if I put graphite dust in this thing, it presses it out into coal. Take the coal, you put the coal in this chest over here, and it will eventually be worked through into coal coke, which the coal coke we can then crush up into the same hop or the coal coke dust, which we can squeeze to make the hop graphite dust, to make the hop graphite ingots, to make the little bitty diamonds. So that's all I've been doing in between episodes is letting some of this stuff run. So I did promise that we were going to be doing a little bit of stuff, and I'm going to go through the next level of the systems here in just a second or I should say the the quest come on press the right button let's say we're done with this area for right now there's going to be some things we're going to need to do and there's going to be some things that we need to play with down through here um, this is going to be very important because there's going to be a way we're going to get glowstone out of this section over here which is very awesome let's go to unlimited dimensions or the next size up so i did in the last episode go ahead and craft a miniaturization little bitty deals the uh, the field projectors as you guys saw and there's a reason for that because that means we can now craft up to the yellow size uh, what is it the normal size compact machines using the miniaturization field deal so where is my deal um it's not here oh yeah and i had to go get some of this the um 
<laughs> Netherwart. Netherwart is a royal pain in the butt because Netherwart requires you to do something, well, you know, the same old way we usually do, used to do with um, X and Hilo or, you know, regular Skyblocks is you have to get Mycelium. And these he comes from dirt and ancient spores on, you know, you place it, the ancient spore, or the, yeah, whatever it is, on top of the dirt. That transforms the area into mycelium. You put water in that bucket. That bucket fills full of witch water. You place sand in the bucket of witch water. You sieve the <laughs> soul sand that comes from the bucket of witch water. And you get occasionally the nether wart which is in, nope, not this one, which is, I'm all backwards and sideways, which is in here. So that's where I got all the nether wart form, and that's where we have to kind of go back to something going. I forgot that did that. <laughs> the, the nether wart was required for this. So I believe it was the red, no, the red die we kind of cheated out. What did I need nether wart for? Oh, nether wart, I needed it for the, 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 this, this, this over here. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Now I'm lost. I'm trying to, trying to remember everything I did. I should have, should have played with this. The proxies. Proxies, 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 which actually I think we may end up using eventually as it is. So, uh-oh. No, don't do that. Thank you. My mouse, my, my scroll wheel gets a little itchy once in a while, so that's fine. See, he's itching. So, hang on. Let me do this. That probably stopped that problem. Yeah? Okay, cool. Alrighty then. Uh, yes, we made a proxy somewhere. I think I didn't throw it away. Yeah, there it is. Proxy. Proxies needed a, a nether wart, obsidian, and iron. And proxies are actually a really cool thing because this is kind of reminiscent of the transvector blocks. Or forget what the heck they were called in the uh, in Thomcraft and the other blocks that are in um, actually additions that basically allow you to target another machine with that block and give it six more sides to play with. So some of these blocks, you get to the point where you're needing all access to every single side of them in order to be able to do something. So the proxies are very, very, very handy. So, all right, uh, as you can see, I have been making ender pearls, of course, and we need a bit of redstone to go into the next box. So let's go in here real quick and grab a stack of, a stack of redstone and go in this box. Now, this is not going to work currently because of how I have this set up. And yes, I'm making <laughs> coal coke in here as well because there's a, we just need a bunch of it. And I'm hoping today we can solve that problem. What I want to do is I want to take these guys and we're going to move them up a little bit. Now that we've rambled on for 15 minutes. What I want to do today is there's some things I kind of discovered and thought about in between episodes because of the fact that we have specific mods namely immersive engineering did that work good all right cool in this mod pack so let's get out of here and let's just grab some kind of building tool uh, we'll just do those it's not like I can't make a lot more stone actually I probably should make a bunch more stone since we're kind of needing the experience so I, I haven't even looked down that ren, down that chain, haven't even bothered to see what it's like. So let's get in here. Um, hmm, how can I get up there easily? I guess what we can do is I need to be able to cover that so I can build on it. Yes, that will work. We'll just do the old dirty, just do something like this for right now. Maybe. No? <laughs> that won't work. Well, we'll do this then. There we go. Just to be able to get up here and play with this for a second. So, as far as getting Ender Pearls is concerned, we're going to look at the Ender Pearl recipe. Recipe, 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 recipe. Recipes for the Ender Pearls are a block of redstone, redstone, and a whole lot of obsidian. And that was what I knew I'd forgotten. Where is that crafting table? Come here. There you go. So, we need a block of redstone. Thank you. And we need to be able to make an ender pearl. And ender pearls are pretty cheap, pretty easy once you have the parts. So getting the lava into obsidian going was very pertinent, very important for this process. And this is one of those things eventually we're going to be able to automate this. We're going to be able to get this to where we don't have to sit there and hand place all this stuff. But basically that's all you do. You build a cube, you toss a piece of redstone on it, and it goes down. And it turns into an ender pearl. 
Very cool, right? All right, cool. I'm going to do that one more time here real quick. And just because, actually, no, we need to do that how many more times? I'm going to have to go get some more stuff. Just kind of showing you some of the things that we've been doing or been doing in between episodes, just trying to get caught up because once it's kind of one of those things when you get to a certain spot in a mod pack, you get to a place where you can say, okay, I can finally take a breather. I can finally start kind of cleaning things up, and organizing, get into a better groove than what you've been in. And that was literally last episode where everything got a little bit easier to do and a little bit easier to work with because I now have these big rooms. I mean, Dire Wolf 20 would be absolutely happy inside this building. Actually, I think this one's a little too big for him, but whatever. This definitely makes life a little bit easier. So we can do those and we can do, grab me, grab me my bricks. Can I just come in up there? Is that a thing that I can do? Is it like right there? Can I do that seriously? We also need, do I have any of it left? No. Yes, I do. Good deal. Um, that, those, the, the, I know I probably showed this last episode, but we'll go ahead and do it again because it's very, very cheap the way to do, we're doing things. So we're going to go ahead and make one very quickly. But in order to get the compact machine walls to make the next level of various things, I think it was just this and that. No, it's the other way around. Give me that back. Really? Did it? Can I remember how to make these, please? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, I was standing in it. That's the only problem about the projectors. If you're standing in it, it doesn't like it. But that's how you make a lot of those in a hurry. So if we wanted to make, say, the next tier of compact machine, or the one that we can actually make that way still, we need some of this. Thank you. And back in there. So if we look at the normal compact machine, it has a multi-block crafting recipe for a 3x3 three three miniaturization that requires 26 compact machine wells, a block of gold, and one ender pearl. Now, the issue here is the large compact machine, or the one we're making now, this is a 5x5 five five construction to only. Only. So it's a 5x5 five five construction only. There's no other ch clicks. There's no other things. So that means in order to make it, we still have to make these, which get cooked into a melter, into compact fluid, into ingot formers, into normal machine pieces that make those. So what I want to do right now, and then we're going to make a cut once I get this done. I'm going to show you we're going to make one of those really quickly. Is I'm going to make, I think, three more of these big ones, which is going to require a lot of enderpearls and a lot of obsidian and a lot of my time. But I have a plan for the project today. I have a thought. And the reason why I say I have a thought is because of the actual size of this machine. So... Let's build this one up real quick, and then I'm going to craft a bunch of these off camera. It's going to take a lot of work, but there you go. We'll get him finished. They take quite a while to craft. But it's so much easier than doing it the other way. Come on. Thank you. All right. And there we have a perfectly normal compact machine. <laughs> okay, guys. I'm going to make, uh, what did I figure? At, get those out of your arm before you throw them away. I'm going to make at least three more of these big ones because we need to be able to do something with them. And we need to be able to mo move forward with this kind of a thing now. It's a little thought that I had, and I want to test it. Um, and I need to be able to have lots of space to do it. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Oh, I should have done this a couple of minutes ago. Oh, I forgot all about this. Hello. Just saying it's there, just so you know. Copy-paste gadget from a wonderful... <laughs> uh, you build it once, you copy it, then you just copy it, put it back down. So I don't even know why I didn't think about that. Copy-paste gadget. Wow, 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 wow. Copy-paste gadget. The biggest problem about a copy-paste gadget is it requires you to make a clipboard, which you make with poop, paper, and wood. So, all right. Keep, keep, keep cranking them out. Frog, keep cranking them out. 
Alrighty then, I think we got all the parts that we need for those. Hopefully there's all three of those. So one and two and three. Three. Now, there's a couple other things I want to make while we're sitting here. So I went ahead and crafted another cell, and of course this is how we charged our cool little building copy-paste gadget. That was, a, I don't know why I didn't think about that at all. Matter of fact, get your butt in there and get to, get to charging. That makes making those machines, at least at this stage of the game, so much faster because of the fact that it just, you know, you just copy, you make it once, copy and paste it, copy and paste it, copy and paste it. Half the time building the things is actually putting the buildings down. So uh, I did go ahead and start cooking up some of the aluminum. We're going to need the aluminum for Galactic Craft and some of the other later game stuff. But there's something I want to look at. And... It's in something that's a little odd. And the reason why I'm saying it's something that's a little odd is because we have access to certain mods. And certain mods allow us to do certain things. We have the oil processing mod, which is interesting, with the oil processing part of this. Because, you know, this is, this is something that, you know, is there. You get to play with it. But this is an add-on. This is an add-on. This, uh, this is not part of the base mod for immersive engineering. So we get pump jacks, we get desolation towers, we get portable generators, all this wonderful weird stuff. There's not a thing, there's not one of these that's big enough to take the portable distillation or the distillation shower, but the pump jack, fluid reservoirs. This is something that I was kind of sitting here reading going, wait a minute, I wonder, I wonder something, and I wondered something very simply when I'm sitting there going, well, if I have the access to that, that means they intend to give us access to the oil, which means maybe I have access to this thing, which is this thing, which is this thing. And every single mineral deposit, including diamond and coal ore. Coal vein is a mineral vein that can be found anywhere but in dimension one. Anywhere but in the dimension one. We're not in dimension one. Matter of fact, I don't know, you can read the dims or whatever, but you want to look at it, and it's kind of hard for me to get my thing over here. Let's do this. We're in a Taiga right now, which is weird. I'm in a Taiga. Okay, well, I'm in a Taiga in this one. What am I in this one? I'm in a Taiga, but if you notice, the coordinates changed. We're at 71, 70, and 42, and 2. See how they changed? Do you see how they changed? So let's do something. I just want to test it. I need a core sample drill, which I think we can craft most of. I just need some steel scaffoldings. And I need to be able to craft one of these, which we need a few of those dudes. We have copper, hopefully. I just want to test something. Because I don't know. And I'm all about breaking things. You should know that from watching me play Manufactio. <laughs> can I break this mod pack? I mean, I'm assuming you can. I don't know why they would hold you to a specific deal. Did that connect? This might take a few tries, but the reason why I made three of them is there's three things I want. Nothing in this one. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's 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 okay. We're gonna grab you. Where's my wrench? Uh, got the right wrench, and that's nice and full. Let's go try this one. Well, this place, I think it won't because this is too close to it. Yep. Alrighty then. Let's see. This is a brand new, fresh cube that I just made, or but whatever. He can go out. And I just want to see. I don't know. This is testing things on camera. This is playing the game as we go. This is its own dimension. This is a resettable dimension. <laughs> Coal vein with emeralds, diamonds, and lava. Well, I guess I tear this cube down. <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm going to go back to my main one. And we're going to put these down. Go. The reason why I care about that is because the excavator fits in one of these. And so does the pump jack. 
Nothing. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show. See how we have a, we, we've gotten two nothings in this one. This one is empty. So what I can do then is I can pick up my stuff. This one has a specific number. These two are these two can basically set. So this is machine number 19. Now, like I say, I don't know whether they have these set to dimensions. I don't know if they have these in their own things or if they just magically load a specific chunk in the world. I don't know a single thing about compact machines because I've hardly ever really used the mod. There's always so much room to play in as far as the overworld goes. Now, compact machines in a, like a skyblock thing, it's kind of a handy little dude because you don't have to spend a lot of time digging around trying to build surface area. So again, we do this. We're in a different area. And I should have I should have done an F3 on that, but we're in a different area. We're still in a different tie. We're still in the same biome, so to speak, but we're kind of not you know there. We're in a different area entirely. So we got our power. Let's see what we get. I already got what I wanted, at least on on two of the things, although I would like to fill both of these up. I want the oil, and I want the lava. So it's, it's you know, a random chance. Anybody that's ever sat down and played with this thing knows that what's going on right now is the, the thing is randomizing the... Uh, how the how the actual system works, how the actual spawn for whether or not that works. So, but because of the fact that every single time this thing is making up different area or different location or different something, all I got to do is scrub it, put it back down, and look and see what it's got in it. See, it's back to being a whatever again. And once I find what I want, I leave it. Eh, go over there. Thank you. I leave it, build the machine in here I want, and then extract the resources that I need. I want oil because I know we can get oil. Because I want to do some other goofing around with some some things and stuff. Yeah, it's going to sit here and do this to me. So let's leave. Uh, we'll leave this one sitting, and I'm going to go grab another one. And I, 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 don't, I don't know how this is going to be. Whether Maybe I need to be testing it in a different corner, or maybe we should put it in a different side. But we'll put it like here and then we'll go in this one put it in the center and see what it does because this is technically the middle of the the middle of the the machine this is the center of a chunk right here right right around this corner so this thing barely takes up a chunk but I, the machine that I'm going to build in here yeah we're going to be doing this for a while this is the only problem with this idea because of the fact that I'm going to have to sit here and do this over and over and over again until I find what I want. Let's put it over here this time. Because I would really like to not have to be producing lava the hard way at this point. Copper vein. So copper veins are going to have gold, copper, and what in them? Let's see. Um, gold, copper, and nickel. So this is something that we can do as well. So yes, granted, I'm using the excavator. If I use an excavator, we all know how slow an excavator is. But let me tell you something about how cool this little idea is. Can I throw these away? I don't need them because they don't technically exist anymore. You can even look at the, um, the, 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 the coordinates. The coordinates are different. They're from different chunks. That's, that's how you know you're getting different areas, which is interesting. The, the reason why, the whole real reason why I was kind of interested in doing this is because of what we found right here. To be able to make coal and diamonds, we already know how much of a royal pain that is. We've already done it. We did it in the last episode. To make coal, just to make coal, period, coal is a, a nasty long line of silliness. So coal, as far as coal is concerned, is, let me see, I need to get to the correct thing, is a pressurizer. A pressurizer takes Graphite dust and pressurizes it into coal. Graphite dust is made by taking pulverized charcoal or pulverized coal, crushed coal, which I don't know why you would do that, and um, manufacturing this into graphite dust. Pulverized charcoal, of course, is charcoal. Charcoal is, hey, you know how to make charcoal. And in order to make trees, we don't have a nasty, easy way to make trees in this mod pack. Let's start with the diamonds. Diamonds are even more fun to make. Why do I care about diamonds? I mean, you don't really need diamonds right now, do you? Not really. In order to make diamonds, where is it? 
I need a special machine, high impact compactor. High impact compactor takes nine diamond nuggets to make a diamond. A diamond, of course, at this stage, or the diamond nugget at this stage of the game, is either a high impact compactor with three hop graphite ingots, graphite ingots, or, and this is the other or, exploding hop graphite ingots into them at a 20% chance success rate. Or I can take the diamond ore and run it through a crusher and get two of them, a redstone furnace and get one of them, a pulverizer and get two of them, or, you know, flux anodite tectonic initiator and get three of them, or a melter and make melt molten diamonds, which I think we can then probably do other things with. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. If I can get it to work and it's going to function, if for no other reason than the coal and that lava and those diamonds, I'm going to do it. So, all right. Um, I think with that, what we need to do is I need to go sit down and construct all of the parts pieces that I need in order to be able to make that thing work. And, yeah, so... I have got a little bit of time left, I think, on this episode, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit of time crafting all the parts we need up to make that happen, and I will get back with you guys, which means I'm going to have to gut this room, <laughs> but yeah, we'll be back, so see you guys.